Well, it's good, everybody. Timeless Traveled here, and welcome back to my Let's Play. Today's episode marks two wondrous occasions. One, this is the very first day of the 1.17 Caves and Cliffs Part 1 update, with the addition of three new mobs and over 93 blocks and different items. We have a lot to discover, a lot to explore, a lot of new things to find and to build with. This is also the first episode with 1.17. Now, we're going to have to do a little bit of adventuring to find some new generation, specifically like if we want to find some deep slate and take a look at the new ore generations and the amethyst geals. We got a little adventuring to do, but don't worry, I've got a plan. Also, in between episodes, I have been going crazy putting the rest of the Iron Village together. We currently have 74 villagers and all of them have been assigned jobs, of course, and I have been trading effortlessly with all of them to get these top tier tools and armor. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an XP farm right now, so I have to resort to trading a bunch of sugar cane and paper with our librarians and then, of course, trading the iron with our armorers, toolsmiths, weaponsmiths to get the emeralds. And that's how I've been able to get these top tier enchantments. We'll work on a small gold portal ticking farm some point down the line, but we have an adventure. But before the adventure, we have a bit of sad news because of 1.17 officially being out. Zero tick farms no longer exist. Press F to pay respects. Yes, that is right, everybody. So if you had a zero tick sugar cane farm, bone meal farm, kelp farm, cactus farm, they will no longer work. So it's a good thing that we stockpiled as much sugar cane as we could in in between episodes. As we can see here, all of these double chests are completely full, except for this one right here including what we have up at the surface. We have about 73 double chests, totaling us about 2,000, 252,000 sugarcane. That is a quarter million. So we should, we'll have plenty of sugarcane to trade with the librarians, and we should have plenty of sugarcane for paper when the time comes to have rockets. So today's agenda, what I want to do is I want to find we're going to go to the north because if you take a look at the map, we haven't gotten very far in that direction. Do you see that hill right there? That's 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 why that's why I haven't gone to the north. I also was waiting for the new generation, so I have tried to not travel out that far. Now, what we want to find today, specifically in these new unloaded chunks, is some of the new bits. We're gonna look for um, no promises, but I'm gonna maybe find a mine shaft because in there we should be able to find some glow berries. But mainly I want some purple. I want some amethyst shards, some budding amethyst, uh, not for a spyglass. I just want amethyst blocks. I want those musical purple blocks. That's what the 1.17 update is all about. And lucky for us, a software developer who is known on the Twitter as Chunkbase. That's a, it's a, he created a software that we, many of us already know. We use that to find different features in the seeds. And it has just been updated. That's a long way down. It has just been updated for the 1.17 for today. You think we can make the jump? Think we can make it right there? Perfect. So that means chunk base shows us amethyst geodes. So we are we are almost on the spot, actually. It shows and it's as it turns out, there are a lot of amethyst geodes within one small area. I was surprised to see this many generating. So I think finding these naturally may not be as challenging as I originally thought it would be. But we're here, so we're going to go ahead and try out this new Amethyst Geode Finder anyway. All right, so according to Chunk Base, there is an Amethyst Geode right around where that clay space is down at Y equals 20. So 
Whatever you do, never ever dig straight down. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna dig all the way down to the very bottom. Y equals 20. Now what we should do just to be safe, make sure we have a water bucket nearby. There we go, safety first. Now deep slate should show up. It's set at Y equals 11 or Y equals 16. I'm sorry, whoa, hello. Okay, where are we? And it doesn't look like, I don't think this is it because these textures are not different, but we'll take the iron just in case because we do have a fortune pickaxe. So if it has been changed to raw iron, then we will be able to apply fortune to it. And you know what? I think I may have already been in these chunks. Let's just go ahead and bring it down to 20. It should be right here. Amethyst geode, any purple? Purple, 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 where are you? No, what's over here? Uh, looks like a whole lot of nothing. I guess we have to go much further to the north. Okay, so there is no way that there can be loaded chunks already where I'm about to go. Luckily enough, this location has allegedly an amethyst geode and a mine shaft very close together. So if any luck, we can get some purple, some sing some singing purple blocks, as well as uh, what's in the mine shaft, like uh, like drip leaf and azaleas, I think. And it seems we can also come back over here when we need a emerald farm with a pillager outpost right there. And we have the amethyst geode just right over here. This is a fairly convenient area for farming. And down we go. Oh, look at this, everybody. We already have copper. Oh, this is great. Okay, we are at, what, 34? And we came across six pieces of copper. It doesn't look like the coal has updated its texture. I'm not sure what's going on there. Perhaps there will be a hot fix for that. So... I don't know what's happening to the other ores, but we will find out, I guess, when we get down to the proper Y level. We should be coming across, oh, oh, purple. It's purple, I found purple. Oh, look at this. We got ourselves the smooth basalt. Listen to that. Oh, that's such a lovely sound. But we have the smooth basalt. Let's get some lighting up in here. We have the smooth basalt. We have the tough block, which has a nice marbly look to it. Oh, this is this is great, everyone. But let's try to find the inside of this. So we're going to just kind of carve out the perimeter. Music to my ears. It seems with efficiency five, the tough actually breaks pretty easily. And there we go. Is this a new iron ore texture? Nope, it's still pr it's still pre 1.17. So you can silk touch these, but you can't silk touch this. Am I right? Yeah, so we will have to leave the amethyst shards here for mining and down we go oh look at this listen to this beautiful chimey sound oh well we know that the amethyst geode finder does work on chunk base now i know that there's probably a, a, a crystal farm design out there i'm not doing any of that right now what i want to do is just grab a couple of these actually we need the fortune i got i got the wrong pickaxe Okay, so we'll put that back there. And we will get how many? Four, okay. And we have 20, it gave us 16. That's a nice find. So I don't know how long these take to grow. Unfortunately, I don't think I really have time to wait. I'm just gonna go for the largest ones and then just leave these ones here. Over time, these should start to bud with these little guys right here. And we could take those, but I want them to fully grow so I can get more of these lovely 
purple blocks. It's a shame we can't take the budding amethyst with us and set up a farm. We have to always come back to this location and uh, AFK pretty much until <laughs> until they're ready to be harvested. So that gives us 48. So that means we can make 12 amethyst blocks. We can make some tinted glass. We could make spyglass. Pretty much this is mostly going to be for amethyst blocks. I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet. All I know is, is that I have to use it. Well, now that we have our amethyst geode, let's see if we can find some deep slate. It's supposed to spawn at Y16 and below. We're currently at 11 and I'm not seeing any deep slate. Oh, what's this? This is this is more tough. OK, we don't need tough. What we need is deep slate. And there we go. Look at this. We got ourselves deep slate. We've already got ourselves what four new blocks. So we're going to get out here. We're going to go check out the mine shaft and we are in the mine shaft. And oh, 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 look at this, everybody. We have glow light. Um, do I need shears? Or can I use silk touch? OK, OK, perfect. We have glow lichen and the iron ore texture still isn't fixed. Now we're going to harvest this because. You now need silk touch to gather iron ore. We're going to get rid of some junk. What do we not need? We don't need the granite. Take the iron. And we'll get the gold, too, since we don't have a gold farm and we can apply fortune to the gold. We're going to take that with us. Now we got some more copper as well. This is good. I'll take the copper until we have ourselves a copper farm. That's going to be a, a, quite the process. But until we have a copper farm, we could definitely keep some copper when we find it. Got to make a lightning rod to protect my iron village anyway. Ah, here we go. I found the minecart and what's inside? We got glow berries. Look at this. Perfect. All right. We have ourselves a light source as well as food because the glow berry is edible. Now, somebody commented on one of my videos saying that they were having trouble with. The ore generation we weren't able to find any iron so far. I haven't had any bad luck in finding iron. There's still plenty to be found inside this mine shaft. And there's, of course, plenty of coal and we haven't had any issues in finding copper either. So. I'm not sure what's happening with ore generation. Maybe I'm just having good luck. I don't know. But so far, it seems like there isn't any issues with ore generation. Yeah, so we have iron generating here. We have iron generating here. There's some lapis over there, but there seems to be iron everywhere, actually. Now, when I don't need it, I'm finding it everywhere. And look how much of it is generate. Look, look at this. This is more than just your four or eight. Like these are actual legitimate iron veins. Like I almost have a stack just from mining iron ore. I don't know. It seems I'm having it seems I and there's some right here, too. It seems that iron is not that hard to find anymore, but I could just be getting lucky. Now, I saw something that caught my attention. Oh, ah, there it is. So oh, wait, did you did you guys see this? Did you did you did you see this? That was. Look at it, it's a Pokemon and I'm going to catch it. Come here, Oxalotl. I'm here. Oh, we have an Oxalotl, everybody. First attempt. This is why I brought water buckets. It's a good thing that he didn't die because I think he spawned in this water source and got pushed out. So, oh, we have our first Oxalotl. This has become quite the successful adventure. Now, what we have to do is light this area up. So oh, anyone that's wanting to find a bunch of new stuff for the 1.17, I'd say find yourself a mine shaft. So I've got four water buckets for four oxalotls. And earlier, I actually prepared for breeding oxalotls by trading with that wandering, that pesky wandering trader for some 
tropical fish in a bucket. So we can make another two oxalotos. I'm going to build the water dog army. Now, there was something else that caught my eye. Where did it go before we got distracted by the amazing oxalotl? There was dripstone. Yes, let's go get the dripstone. And oh, team, what is that? That's another oxalotl. Let's OK, let's go. I now have enough to start an army, but we're going to bucket as many as I find. I wonder how they spawn just where if there's water underground, do they just OK? That's not realistic. That was a yellow oxalotl. And now the bucket and the icon is pink. I think there needs to be an update to that. Anyway, what are the spawn conditions? Does it just have to be underground at a certain Y level and underwater or just water present? If that's the case, can we just lay a bunch of water underground and then oxalotls will spawn? I don't know, but we have dripstone. We don't have room for dripstone. Let's get rid of some junk. We need the pointed dripstone. We also need. We don't need the andesite and we don't need dirt, but we may pick some something else up. Let's go ahead and there we go. We got the pointed dripstone so we can start ourselves a little dripstone farm and we can also start a lava farm because as long as you have dripstone, and you got yourself a bucket of lava and a cauldron, then the lava will drip from the dripstone into the bucket or into the cauldron and fill up. So now we have an infinite lava source, infinite fuel. We have an iron farm and we will have a lava farm, which means we 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 have unlimited fuel, everybody. Oh, so many amazing things gathered in just a short time. I, I highly recommend all of you that are watching this. Stop watching this right now and Go find yourself a mine shaft. No, no, you don't have to stop watching right now. I, I need the watch time, but get ready to find a mine shaft the moment you are done watching this episode. The copper is not that hard to find. I mean, honestly, we don't even need a copper farm unless you just want to make massive builds with copper blocks. I mean, just like 10 minutes mining come across a mine shaft, you're going to get a lot of copper, especially now that we can apply the fortune enchantment to our to all ores. Now, I think obtaining copper might be one of the easier ores out there besides coal. Well, team, I'd say that was quite the success. We're going to head back to base and take a look at our loot. And I knew it. I knew that I should have brought bones with me as I headed out for this long adventure. Luckily, I brought bones, so hopefully we have enough. I could bring some dogs home with me too, uh, some land dogs. I've got some water dogs in the bucket and I'm going to try to befriend some more land dogs. I saw one more. Where is where's the other land doge? There he is. They will bring good luck for anybody that's invested in Dogecoin. I'll have my land doges right here and then I can put my water doges right here. What? OK, so it actually gives you the name of what oxalot so an adult oxalotl so i wonder if that implies that we can also bucket baby oxalotls i can't imagine what the creative inventory looks like right now there's probably a whole page dedicated to all the different types of oxalotls that you can bucket we have an adult gold oxalotl and then we have an adult uh, what that's that's not even a word lu lu Leucistic. Leucistic. What is a leucistic? That's not a color. Is it supposed to be like translucent and leucistant is a, a way of saying? Why don't they just say translucent? I don't know. Anyway, we have the gold one and we have the pink one. That is not leucistic. It is pink. We are calling it pink. I don't care what they say. What? OK. As long as they don't stay out of the water too long. I think they know not to stay out of water for too long. They are water dogs after all. Water doges and land doges. You are going to be best friends. Oh, look at him. Look at him frolicking. See, this is what happens when an oxalotl has a normal name. This is gold. This is what a gold oxalotl does. The, the not pink, pink one is just... It doesn't know what to do because it doesn't have a proper colored name. 
including the two water dogs and the two land dogs, we gathered up some deep slate, some glow like, and some tough. I could have sworn I gathered calcite. Did I not have room at the time? Hmm, perhaps not. Dripstone block, pointed dripstone, so we can start ourselves the lava farm. So we have infinite fuel. We have our glow berries. So we have a food source. And we also have a lighting source. We have the iron ore, not the new iron textures, nor the gold textures. But we're going to apply fortune to it and see if that works. And then we have the lovely copper ore, which we're also going to apply the fortune texture to, or fortune enchantment to as well. I'm sorry. Also going to do something else that is new in 1.17. We have two buckets of tropical fish. We are going to start a small little army of water dogs. So if we, oh, they, they, they're ready. They're very hungry. Look at this. They're so cute. Look how, look how ready they are. They love tropical fish. Okay, so let's see it happen. What do we get? What color is it going to give us? A pink one. Not a, a, a lucient one. It's not even a word. Okay, so it does say bucket of baby pink oxalotl. So that was the second one that I fed. So I wonder if the second one ends up passing its color on to the baby. I hope you don't. What do you you better get back in the water? I work too hard for you to just shrivel up, dry up and die. OK, so we have ourselves the gold ore that I'm just going to lay down in a line. We have the copper ore and we have the iron ore. We should get a little under three times the amount. So let's go ahead. And let's just tap it real quick. Look at this. We got ourselves raw copper, which we can smelt down into copper ingots. We have oh, we have this. This is this is new. Everybody, this is we will never it will never be the same. You have to use silk touch on iron and gold ore. Otherwise, it will break down into just one of these. You get yourself silk touch. Then you take fortune to it and you get more than one. This is huge, everybody, huge. If you get fortune on your pickaxe before you have an iron farm, you're going to multiply the profits of your mining. This actually makes mining for iron and gold worth it late game. When you have those beacons with your haste too and your efficiency five on your gold or, or on your diamond and netherite pickaxe, it's actually worth your time to pick up the iron and gold ore because we can apply fortune to it. At least it is for me. I'm not going to miss out on any of these blocks when I start my insta mining sessions late game. How much do you think I'm going to get? Place your bets down below before I give you the results. Now we're working on the copper ore. We had about a stack and a half of this. So we should get about three stacks of raw copper. And now time for the rest of the gold ore. Look at this. This is this is honestly going to take some getting used to because, I mean, we just those of us that have been playing for ever, well, pretty much everybody that's been playing. Because at this point, everybody knows what gold ore was supposed to break down into. Same with iron ore. It's a. Uh, we, I still kind of expect the ingot to drop, but instead we're getting the raw versions. Look at this, everyone. There was only a stack and a half of copper ore. So I think, honestly, looking at how much this is, okay, we had, you see how much we have right here? That is how many ore that we had. So you're telling me that from one and a half stacks of copper ore yields, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven full stacks of raw copper. I think that might be a little OP. I'm not complaining. I would love to have it yield me this much copper. Same thing for the iron. This is actually a very good yield for the iron. We had about a stack and a half of iron and we have almost three and a half stacks. And then from a half a stack of gold, we got slightly over a full stack. This is a good yield. Copper, I feel that they're probably going to patch this. I'm hoping that they don't, but it is most likely. It seems like that might be overpowered. But I 
think that's going to be it for today, everyone. Pretty much this episode was, uh, what we wanted to, oh, oh, he's having way too much fun. Look at this. These oxalotls know how to have a good time. But mainly, I just kind of wanted to have a little bit of fun this episode and explore some of the new features that 1.17 has to offer. But anyway, let me know what you think of the new features of 1.17. If you've played 1.17, let me know how that's gone for you. Let me know how this experience was watching, <laughs> watching me discover some of these new things and testing some of them out for myself. I'd love to hear what your, some of your ideas are for your building, what you're going to do with the new blocks and items and what you plan to do with some of these water dogs, maybe. And again, I hope you all had fun watching this. I definitely had fun exploring the cave and getting all these new blocks. And there's definitely more stuff to explore, but we will get to that in future episodes. So until then, thank you all again so much for watching. You all take care. Have an amazing day and I will see you in the next episode.